And your last command was as the NATO commander and supreme allied commander in Europe, where you led NATO forces to victory in Operation Allied Force, saving 1.5 million Albanians from ethnic cleansing. You've got some great karma. Tell us about that. So what happened was we negotiated the peace treaty, a peace agreement that stopped the fighting in Bosnia. But Milosevic was also cracking down on his ethnic Albanian population a couple of hundred miles away in, in Kosovo. And um, these Albanians, they didn't want to be cracked down on. He told them they couldn't educate kids in their own language. If you were Albanian, you couldn't be a doctor. You couldn't be a member of the government. You couldn't issue driver's licenses. He just ran them out, basically. And it was like a takeover of the government by a minority. And um, they stood up and fought. And um, he responded with military action against the civilian population. I flew down and tried to, on a couple, three occasions, we went down and negotiate with him and tried to explain to him. I stood with his generals, sat around a map, explained to the Serb generals, you can't do this. I mean, basically, you, you put military force against people. I'm, I'm from Arkansas. You know, I grew up with guns. Mm -hmm. I know what people don't like to be pushed around. Mm -hmm. People have self-respect. You put a bunch of yahoos down there in, in uniform pushing around these people, they're going to fight back. I said, you've got to get them on your side. So, you know, the Serbs didn't believe it. They believed they could intimidate the population, take out the educators, the doctors, the lawyers, the human rights workers, anybody who had resistance, they'd take them out, shoot them, or dump the body down mine shafts or whatever. And uh, so they did this for a couple of years, and the population rose up in revolt. And... Um, so uh, NATO had said to Milosevic he couldn't do it, and if he tried to do it, we would take military action against him. We did this in an effort to stop him from doing it, but when he started, we took the military action. So we did a bombing campaign um, against him of escalated attacks, and we also prepared a ground force or planned to do a ground force invasion if he didn't stop. But um, after 78 days of steadily escalating strikes against his um, resource base and his capital and his uh, communications and so forth, Milosevic realized he was on the losing side. And Milosevic, the Serb dictator, he was a very rational guy. Spoke English. I knew him. So I was, I'm probably the only 20th century commander who really knew his principal adversary. And uh, we knew how to, how to break his spirit and take his will away. And we did. And when we sent a Tomahawk missile into his house, which was used as a command center and had a bunch of antennas on it, people cheered. Oh, and uh, I'm cheering. Yeah. And so uh, we didn't kill him, and I was happy for Good. that. But, uh, but we did uh, really symbolically take down the regime. And um, the, after 78 days, we negotiated an agreement that they pulled all their forces back, and a million and a half Albanians came out of the forest and came back from neighboring countries to their homes. And today, Kosovo is an independent country. I love it. It, well, it didn't have to work out that way. Generally, we don't like to create new countries. But when your ego is too big. But, but you couldn't do anything. These people were, they were so hard-headed that they just couldn't live together after so many relatives had been killed and so forth. You know, the thing I learned, don't use the military unless you have absolutely no other way because military is about breaking things and killing people. And when you kill people, their relatives, they don't forget and forgive. They'll hold grudges for a long time. You know, people in Arkansas, I would. we know that. Yeah. We went through the Civil War down here, and when I was a little boy growing up, there were still Confederate soldiers alive. And people were kind of quiet about it, but grudges last a long time. And, uh, and don't do that as a nation if you can avoid it. That's the most fundamental lesson I learned. If you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the picture of Carrie's face in the center of the screen. For more of Carrie's interviews, click either video on the right of the screen. And as always, thank you for watching.